June, just around 3.30 in the afternoon, so about uh, 15 hours and 30 minutes into the day. And we were off on the roadblock, took the SOD off, stuck most of the day on Friday. We're going now, it's back to our normal schedule. It's nice and warm out, it's well, just very hot outside. So. Uh, the breeze on the bike always makes it uh, more enjoyable. Set of dreams again. Dreams are always the things that are on top of you, with, uh, as you sort of uh, move along. And it's as if there's no difference between day and night. The awareness of what's going on is always there. And the thing is that the dreams always have their their sort of called sense of mundane the sense of I've done this before that's always there uh, and so at some point in time you, you, you just gotta sort of trod through the whole thing and sort of see how you end up working out with it uh, I managed to get more uh, a, a, a much more work done on the notebook once you collect enough notes uh, for your research you, uh, and, and they're loose notes you do have to organize somewhat of a notebook in order to keep track of everything, and that's what I'm doing now. Is so the uh, that whole sphere of things, uh, connecting Lionel LeBron with Voltaire and the, the sort of the, the 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 age of the intellectuals. Because we're now leaving the age of the intellectuals and and, uh, and into the age of the postmodernists. The postmodernists are fundamentally different than the intellectuals. They have no sense. They have no sense of reality. But that, again, that's what postmodernism is about. It's about uh, no reality. That everything is simply a concept. Now, if everything is a concept, and this is the whole thing that that Voltaire brought out about uh, about sort of abstract thought, then there are no rules. No laws, no right, no wrong. Uh, this is sort of what was in uh, in uh, John Lennon's song, Imagine. Well, his song, you know, was essentially a communist national anthem. An anthem to communism. You'll see that right within communism, which was developed by Marx in a modernist era, in the modern era, in the modernist era, toward the beginning of everything. Uh, what you begin to see is you begin to see that uh, the underlying grounds, the the roots of uh, postmodernism, were already there. So it, they were just sort of hidden in the details. And so John Lennon's song can be viewed as an ode or an anthem postmodernism where nothing exists. Everything is simply a concept. But then if you don't if then nothing exists then why do you care because you don't exist either? Well, this, this, this is where the sort of the contradiction comes in. If you're simply a concept then you fundamentally don't exist. And the, and the reality is the courts don't exist, the police don't exist, nothing exists. This is why you can defund the police and not have an issue. And this, ironically enough, just sort of think about it now, it comes into my mind. And these are verbal notes. These are my mind, the verbal 
the sort of uh, outpouring of my mind. And as we talk about these things, I realize that Dostoevsky's put the chapter of the uh, of the Grand Inquisitor in uh, Brothers Karamazov, which is an interesting read, where from the Catholic perspective, they let go of nothing. They, 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 the dominion never ceases. But they understand that the folly of man will lead them right back to the Catholic arms again, that they can rule through the sea and create what's called a better world, a more perfect world. In other words, they're talking about creating a utopia on Earth. And the line that sort of struck me the most, this is what we see today with a lot of different things going on, was it says, we will sell them slavery as freedom. And this is exactly what we see today. Slavery being sold as freedom. And we think it's a good thing. And many people will willingly come and take their point place as a slave. Assuming that they've been sold freedom. In other words, they will pay for they will pay to become slaves. And it's different because of the assumed receipts. What they assume they're going to receive provides a sort of an incentive and this is where you have to be careful you always have to look and see what's going on because that lady just pulled out she didn't stop really so you really do have to be, be careful when you drive. The attention must be. And that's why kind of the conversation gets broken up. As I said before, the conversation are notes. This, these are the notes. Uh, this is what continuously goes on in my mind. So what you're simply, what you're hearing is simply the verbalization of. mind, my thoughts. And to some, degree, to some degree, because it is a spoken, if you will, a spoken essay, to a certain degree, uh, there is an element of organization. The thoughts are organized. They're gone through, they're mulled over, they're sort of thought about and On the way here, you think about you know, part one is on the way here, with my destination. Uh, you think of one way to phrase things, and sometimes on the way back, you think of another. Lebron is going to be in our uh, vlogs for quite a bit with this uh, Voltaire project. It's going to be quite extensive. It's going to take a, a fair amount of time to finish. It goes, in, it goes into a large chunk of mathematics, it goes into the origins of calculus, uh, heading into to, to how mathematics emerges from Gnosticism. This is the science and mathematics come out of Gnosticism. They don't come out of nowhere. And so what happens is that you have to sort of consider this history that most of the mathematicians, most of your scientists uh, had some degree of awareness of at least a God. In other words, they were theists. So a person who believes in God or a God is a theist. A person who does not believe in God is a person 
is an atheist. So we have theism, believe in God. Atheism is the uh, is the opposite. And I said, in terms of defining religion, well, anything you do with a particular uh, sort of regiment, anything that becomes a ritual, whether you believe in God or not, is still a fundamental religion. If you believe in the environment, you believe in global warming, you believe in CBD, you know, that, sorry, you're a, a religious person. Maybe a religious, the science of religion, which is the religion of science. There is that. There is the religion of mathematics. Actually, that, that's where the, that came from. There is the religion of knowledge. Those are the sophists. The religion of wisdom. In other words, there's, a, there's an enormous amount to sort of really uh, digest, go through, to research and study. Anticipated, but again, near the air conditioning on my parents' house and feeling the vent, I thought it was cooler outside than uh, it actually is. But uh, of course, on the scooter, there is a nice breeze. Uh, emptied another clip. again. A little slow, but otherwise, you know, none the worse for wear. Get the conversation in mind. I do have something is Different things you see, different things you watch, give you thoughts and impressions. And one of the shows uh, that we can kind of agree on in terms of watching is Death and Birth. It's a murder show that, that takes place uh, on the lovely island of Saint Martin, particularly on the French side. Uh, I ended up watching a little bit of Lionel LeBron on my uh, tablet now. I've got things sort of open. My office is rather portable, and I did a little bit of walking for uh, to check up online and see what he's up to. And basically, it's kind of the same thing. He doesn't go into any detail on anything. He does know a lot, you know, in terms of being a lawyer and stuff like that. But there's no real, no real detail in terms of. You know, exp you know, explaining uh, the you know, mechanism or anything like that. But then again, he says that's on on, uh, on YouTube that uh, there are restrictions, but there are always ways around the restrictions. So uh, that's his issue. That's his thing. 
But it comes with uh, eight, this talk about flying on the front. But it comes with discussion in terms of how people's personalities are. And she didn't like his personality. <laughs> You know, he, he does take a bit of getting used to. Uh, he is, in, in many cases, quite insulting. So I don't see how a lot of people would actually like to be around him. But of course, if you got something that they want, people will put up with a lot just to get what they're after. And his wife's a producer. Uh, he's got some clout in terms of his legal capacity. Uh, I said he's not he's not the highest place, but he's he's well placed in terms of his position inside. He's, he's, he's such that he provides a litmus test on the so-called what they call which we call the upper echelon of society, the upper portions of society, to sort of see what these uh, mucking about the heats are kind of thinking because. He's kind of in that league in terms of the intellectuals. He's one of the what we would call the advisors to that level. People do pay attention to him. So it's not a matter of what your opinion is of him. It's rather what he says. That becomes the entire issue. Once again, as I said, as I began to sort of describe and compare his personality, he comes across, he, he is fundamentally an intellectual. And I said he's along the lines of Voltaire because he doesn't actually, see Voltaire didn't do any of the work on his own. The work, Voltaire did nothing. <laughs> In terms of, you know, I don't know, what did Voltaire do? Well, he actually did nothing. Go back and take a look at the work he's done supposedly did. There's nothing there. What he did is he paraphrased other people. That's, all, that, 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 that's what Voltaire does. He paraphrases other people. He's got no thoughts. He's got no thoughts of his own. But this is the case of most intellectuals. Most intellectuals are about bravado, they're about the pretense. And I should say that pretense is not only words. See, pretense does emerge in words as proprietary, as a propriety. The pretense is basically the fancy word pretend they pretend to be and using their words carefully they pretend to be things that they're not and this is the whole issue with Lionel LeBron is that of course he's got to maintain the cachet but this is how he makes his living of course Alex Jones is the same thing uh, Watch most of the pundits, and there's a lot of confusion out there as to where things are, how they stand, who's going to do what, you know. And it kind of reminds me because, you know, going into the summer, it reminds me of some of the documentaries I watched and some of the things I imagine from the documentaries as the, and some of the. Uh, Research have done on, on sailing, and that there are the, there are the great winds in terms of sailing the tall ships and the cargo ships, and this is before steam or anything like that. That 
takes you from the Azores, which is on the north, and, and, and then I can see this on the satellite. Uh, up to the Azores, there is a steady stream flint that takes you all the way across the ocean into the, into the Caribbean. However, there is a point just around the Bermuda Triangle. It has an area known as the Sargasso Sea because it's the, uh, they look like little grapes, so they call them uh, the grapevines of the sea, not the Sarg Sargasso. Uh, and at that point, your trade winds fall off. Matter of fact, they go down to nothing. And you could have days of calm with no wind at that point in the sea. And you, you, you still, at that point, you still can't see land. So you still, you're still far enough out that you don't see land. And you just sit there in terms of, because if your, your ship is powered by the wind, the, the sailing ship, then your uh, ship just sits there. And you have to wait until the wind blows again. And sometimes it could be a day, it could, or it could be two days, or it could even be at last a month or two months. It just really depends. And if, you're, if your supplies are limited, for sailors, that would mean that could mean the, the difference between life, life and death. But at the same time, this is sort of what comes to mind as you're doing, going into doing research. And I'm just now sort of laying out my notebooks for this. Uh, opens up whole new dimensions, but at the same time, the amount of fix I'm not fixing up that has to be done, the amount of uh, sort of busy work that has to be done, kind of slows things down to a point where it's like you're not moving at all. And so you have a feeling like you're lost, you're, or although yeah, you know, you're comfortable because it's warmer, it's warmer out than in the winter, but at the same time you're lost.